Hi folks, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Amy Nye and I'm with Sun Life Foundations. Um, I am the Partnerships and Training Manager and today we'll be going through and talking about uh, one of our uh, newest relaunches of our tool uh, called Open Congress. So with me in the room is uh, Drew Vogel, who is one of our uh, lead developers who worked on this tool, as well as uh, uh, Liz, our media director. You guys want to say hi? <laughs> hi there. Hello. Um, so just real briefly, I'll introduce Sunlight for folks who are not familiar uh, with us. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization based here in Washington, D.C., and we build tools and provide resources to make it easier to access government information. And you can actually find out more about us on our webpage, and I'll show that um, on sunlightfoundation.com. And then additionally, you can learn more about the different tools and resources available on our Tools tab. So today we'll be uh, going through and uh, providing a uh, mini tutorial on our latest tool, um, Open Congress. So I say it's a relaunch because Open Congress was actually originally launched in 2007 by the Participatory Politics Foundation uh, with continued support by Sunlight Foundation and we recently reacquired it uh, this year. And over the years, millions of users have used Open Congress to access federal legislation uh, from the site and it is a very easy to use tool in terms of finding out what's going on in Congress and helps uh, provide you with the tools necessary to get connected with the issues that you care about. And you can find the tool at opencongress.org. I'm sure many of you have taken, had a chance to take a look at it. Um, so I'm going to give you a brief uh, overview of the webinar structure. So we're going to go through some of the basic functions of the Open Congress tool. And then throughout, we are going to provide you some uh, use cases for Open Congress, as well as uh, cover the data sources of what is the information that powers Open Congress, as well as talk a little bit at the end about the future plans and hopefully get some feedback from you um, on features and functions that will help improve uh, your user experience. So here we are at opencongress.org. And for folks who've been to the site before, the um, homepage definitely got a bit of a facelift. Uh, so it looks quite different. And really featured here is um, the search on, on the front page. Um, and uh, also provided here is just a quick determination of, you know, is Congress in session? That's usually, that's actually one of the uh, things that people are always interested in, just, you know, you know, whether um, Congress is in session today or not. So we provide this information. This information is populated from the um, House and the Senate calendars. And then if you scroll down, you also see recent activities. Uh, you can sort this by votes or by bills. And additionally, the most viewed bills uh, on the site. And you can also sort this by votes, issues, senators, or representatives. So as I was saying, a lot of times people who are coming to Open Congress are just really looking for information. They're going to be coming through um, and interested in searching for something. So you can search via a variety of different ways. We are showing you here some popular searches as well. And you can also search by uh, bill number. You can put in you know, HR or Senate Bill 150. The spacing actually doesn't matter. Here you see the assault weapons ban. And I can also show you if you're putting in HR, if I'm putting in the periods, that will also get you. Oh. Maybe I forgot the spacing. <laughs> Maybe the spacing does matter. Here we go. It's coming up with uh, the House Resolution 391. Oh. HR 992. So this is the bill that I was looking for. So if you are looking for a bill, just click on the bill that you find that is of interest to you. And we're providing here the official information about the bill. We see here um, the title. You can also click to see, view all of the um, official titles. 
as well as um, just information about the bill. You can click to look at the official bill text, and there's a progress ribbon to let you know uh, where the bill is at currently. It also provides you with the sponsor information, and then you can also click to see the additional co-sponsors on this bill. Committee information, you can view all the committees, as well as related issue area. And this information, as the states here, is provided by um, CRS, the Congressional Research Service. And if you scroll down, you can also see uh, the latest information about the bill, latest vote information, the official summary, and also we've integrated uh, data from MapLite providing organizations supporting and opposing this bill, as well as um, showing you the latest letters to Congress. So these are letters generated by Open Congress users about the specific bill. And lastly, uh, related bill information. So in terms of creating uh, letters to Congress, it's actually a very easy tool. On the right-hand side, there are additional functionalities. So you can uh, send a letter to your rep. You can say that you're either supporting it or opposing it. Or you can just simply track the bill if you're interested. Is there a question? Can we mute, mute them all? I'm sorry, I'm just going to mute the individual. <laughs> you got it? Okay, great. So uh, you can also send a letter to your rep, as I was saying before. And actually doing that is fairly easy. You just hit the support, and I would like to send a letter to your rep. And when you do that, you actually will be uh, prompted to provide a little bit more information and if you are actually logged in, a lot of this will be uh, provided for you. It will be filled in for you. So let's say, for instance, you know, I'm logged in here. HR. No, that is not the bill. 992, sorry. So now that I'm logged in and I hit support, you will see that my zip code is put in there, auto-filled. And then it also shows you the representatives. And additionally, when I logged in, it also created or uh, populated My Open Congress, which is an additional navigation bar on the top here that allows you to look at tracked items, actions, and whatnot. And I encourage you to take a look through this and we'll be covering some of these functionalities uh, throughout the course of the webinar as well. So here uh, is a message builder that is um, built into this function. You can simply just type in anything you want about the bill. This is great. I urge you to support it. Um, and you see here there are official bill information on the right hand side that you can uh, add onto your letter of support if you're interested. And it's fairly easy. Uh, you can also determine whether the privacy option, you can share it and make it public like the other user that we saw, or you can make it private so it's just between uh, you and your rep. So I'm going to go back to the bill here. And, and another thing you can do is actually look at the actions and votes. And this will provide you with more detailed information about this bill. So I can go into actions. And this will now list for you all of the actions that's happened on this bill. There are four pages of action. There's definitely a lot going on. Um, so you can scroll through. And you can also just see the latest action on the last page. And additionally, you can also explore the different votes on this bill. You can see here there are two votes on this bill. By clicking on the vote, you will see additional information about it. It's broken down um, by vote results. 
And there's also data visualizations for the vote by party. So how many I votes are by, of Democrats, how many of Republicans, how many nay votes from Democrats and Republicans. And in addition, on the right-hand side, this is the actual um, roll call vote. And there's also additional summary information here on the top. So before I go on further and talk about some of the other functions, I just wanted to pass it on to Drew for a moment uh, to talk a little bit more about the data that powers Open Congress. Hi, this is Drew. I'm a developer on the Open Congress project. I um, just want to share my desktop with you. Give me one moment. You should be seeing a website that says GitHub at the top. Um, this is a joint project that is um, uh, has its roots in a cooperative effort between the Sunlight Foundation, uh, the New York Times, GovTrack, and a couple of other uh, organizations that have come along after we started it. Uh, we found last year that we had been scraping the same official sources, such as uh, Thomas, the Library of Con Congress website, uh, the Government Printing Office website, uh, and a few other official sources. Uh, we decided we should pitch in and start uh, contributing code to a common repository. So uh, when we took over Open Congress recently, we uh, decided to base the data off of this same project. If you click on the um, Congress repository here, this is the uh, all of the code and, and some of the data that is powering Open Congress behind the scenes. Uh, if you want to get a sense of the official sources for any particular part of the site, you can just look at this repository uh, if you're interested in those uh, gritty details. Uh, there's also this Congress Legislators Project, and this is where we store information about um, the status of members of Congress. Uh, when a member either resigns or passes away, uh, that information will be reflected here uh, and very quickly imported into Open Congress. All right, so some of you uh, may be familiar with our Open Congress, I'm sorry, not our Open Congress API, our Congress API. Uh, that is uh, based on the same project that I just showed you. Um, it's the Open Congress website is not based on the Congress API, uh, though you can get the same information from both. You want to show that? Don't want to show that? Uh, Uh, so both of those uh, projects, the data goes back to the 109th Congress, which is generally uh, what official sources make available online. Do you have any other? Can you also just talk a little bit more about how frequently that information is updated on the Open oh, yeah. Congress site? <laughs> sure. Uh, the official sources for the information are uh, quite variable in how they update the data. The votes come through more quickly than do, do in, does information like the bill titles. Um, we try to scrape everything uh, related to bills and amendments and uh, roll calls every hour or so. So the our website should be at most an hour out of date with uh, the official sources and uh, things like committee reports and committee meetings scheduling uh, that we only update once a day because the official sources do as well. Right. So if there are folks have any questions about the data, feel free to chat it to us or unmute by pressing star seven and just asking a question. Um, so in addition to what um, uh, Drew was saying, you can also find out more about the project on the bottom of the page about, uh, about the uh, Open Congress, which is the link that's here you see. And there's additional more resources and information for developers and um, links to the API that Drew was referencing here on the bottom of the page for Open Congress. So now I would like to go through uh, some of the different tabs and show some of the different functionalities in them. So we looked at you know a, a search, and that's a lot of times how people are going to come through Open Congress when they're looking for something in particular. 
but a lot of times you might be just browsing for legislation or looking for your member. So there are the navigation here on the top is very useful for finding that information. So here I am in the bills tab. And right now the bills are aggregated. I'm looking at all Congress and this is all of the bills. So this is the most recent information, uh, the most recent bills in the Senate, most recent bills in the House of Reps, as well as the most recent resolutions, um, joint resolutions, and lastly, concurrent resolutions. So this is just the way in which it is sorted right now. But you can also sort it by the most viewed um, by users of Open Congress. And there's different parameters of how far back you can look at most viewed. And then additionally, you can sort it by the major bills by issue area. As I was saying earlier, the issue area, that data is provided by CRS. Um, and we're just importing that. And so the major bills here are actually hand curated um, by us um, from the different categories provided by CRS. And the next tab are hot bills um, on Congress, on OC. And these are just bills in which individuals have provided whether they're interested, yay, nay, supports, and whatnot. So the hot bills are a type of activities that's happened on the specific bills. And these functionalities, you have to be logged in to Open Congress to be able to perform. Um, and then nextly, we have the most recent actions. So these are the bills uh, that had the most recent actions in them. And then lastly, we have rush bills. Um, Andrew, do you want to talk a little bit more about rush bills? Uh, sure. The, the rush bills tab is uh, a little sparse right now because of the, uh, the, the definition of the 72-hour rule has uh, morphed over time. Uh, that, in conjunction with a change in the way that GPO has uh, time-stamped bill version updates, uh, it's really difficult to either to show this without either over reporting or under reporting so at the time till we can determine a solution for the timestamp problem uh, we'll just leave this empty for right now but, but in the near future that should work again and in the past it's actually been a very uh, useful function and interesting because rush bills are tend to be bills that um, they want to sort of get through very quickly and a lot of times under the radar so we're leaving this tab there as a work in progress, we're definitely looking forward to updating that function. So as I was saying earlier, um, you can either look for bills um, via the search or you can also find your representatives. So here we have the uh, senators and representatives broken out by um, two different tabs. And it is fairly easy to use. A lot of times you will know exactly who your senators are. Um, but you can also sort by state. You can just jump down to whatever state. And then you can also sort by name and also most viewed and approval. Um, you can also find your representative by just quick and easy map if you prefer a map function. We're just trying to make, give a lot of options out there to make it easier to use, as well as putting in your zip code and that will pull your uh, representative, whether it's your senator or um, your uh, House member. So I'm just going to choose a rep. So here. So here we're looking at a representative, and we're providing you with uh, the basic biographical information about that rep. So here we're looking at Senator Sessions. We're seeing all of the different terms uh, in which he has served in office. Uh, he's a Republican. He was sworn in 1997. And here we actually have some interesting information that provides you a little bit of comparison. So how many bills has he sponsored and how does that rank, uh, oppose, uh, um, rank amongst other representatives? And how many of the bills have been turned into law? Not many bills <laughs> are, are actually um, turned into law, especially in the Senate. So you can see that he's made zero into law and he still ranks 12 of 99. And then there's still uh, also more comparison information about co-sponsor bills. And additionally, uh, you can see how often he votes with certain members uh, of the Republican and the Democratic Party, and the least often with Republican and Democratic Party, and how often he votes with his party. 
Uh, and on the sidebar here, there's uh, uh, more official information. We're linking you to his, uh, his website, his contact web form, providing you with his official address and phone number information. And then most recently, we just integrated uh, Twitter into this. So you can uh, either follow him or you can tweet at him directly from the Open Congress site. As we scroll down, we are looking now at the committee membership information. These are all of the committees that he's a member of. And then just his most recent sponsored bills and co-sponsored bills. In addition to his recent voting history, as well as uh, recent videos of him that, and this is being populated um, from his official YouTube account, in addition to uh, other sources. Uh, Medivit is the other source that we're polling from, and you can see that here on the bottom of the page. Uh, and the tabs here provide you more in-depth information about this member. So you can see all of his votes, 79 pages long of his votes. You can also search just in votes if you're looking for how he voted on a specific bill. And then we also have uh, campaign finance information about every single one of the representatives. And this information is pulled from one of our other tools, uh, Influence Explorer. And you can actually click through to look at all of his campaign finance information. And this site uh, is another one of our Sunlight tools. Uh, we are using the campaign finance data from CRP, which does Open Secrets, um, as well as from uh, NIMSP, National Institute of Money and State Politics, on the, um, on the state level, which does uh, follow the money. So you can get us more information about his influence profile. And then nextly, we also have integrated um, information from fundraisers. Uh, so the most recent fundraisers that have been thrown or held for Jeff Sessions. And this is being integrated from another one of our uh, different tools called Political Party Time. And you can find out more about this project um, on the Party Time page. And then lastly is the videos tab. This is just now a repository of all of the videos that we have pulled uh, from his YouTube page and from the outside uh, MetaVid source that we're using. Uh, before I move forward, are there any questions? Feel free to unmute yourself by hitting star seven or just um, typing it online and Liz can answer them. So we looked a little bit on, on the votes already, uh, but I'm going to click open the votes tab because what it also allows you to do is just look at the most recent votes. But we also link here to a very interesting and useful tool. It's the head-to-head -head comparison tool. So some of the data that you saw on the individual member pages are actually um, data aggregated from this tool. So you can here, you can look at, um, compare two members side by side to look at the differences or similarities between uh, the voting patterns of, of the two different members. And you can also see how frequently they vote with their party. So just as an example, I'm just going to choose, let's see, Ted Cruz and Harry Reid. So now we are loading up the individuals. And then you can see um, Cruz's party votes is in green and the similarities uh, to the Republican Party. And then Harry Reid's. And then the voting similarity between the two uh, senators. Just also providing just more comparisons if they're on any shared committees, they're not. And then we have a vote-by-vote uh, -vote comparison on roll call votes between the two members. Um, in addition to the votes, uh, you can also navigate by issues. Clicking issues. It's probably just taking a little bit to load. Here we go. 
As I was saying earlier, and as you saw throughout the tool, the issues, uh, that data is um, populated from CRS, the Congressional Research Service. So these are the different categories that you can search by. You can also make a widget for any issue that you're interested in. And then you can also browse via committee. So we are now showing here all of the different committees and all of the subcommittees um, in the House and in the Senate. And if you click on any of the committees, we show you um, a list of all of the different members of the committee, listing all of the subcommittees, as well as any of the reports that's been issued by the committee, as well as most recent bills. And lastly, I want to show um, the groups function. So the groups function is a great resource for individuals and organizations who are interested in creating a forum for dialogue or for just getting their activists or support supporters together on a specific issue. And the tool also allows you to self-identify whether you support or oppose specific bills. Um, and this functionality is one of the ones that's only available if you have an account and you log in. But everyone, regardless of w whether you have an account or not, you can um, browse the different groups that are created in Open Congress. So you can access this information by groups. I'm already logged in. And you actually, you can see, view all my groups. And for everyone that creates a user account in Open Congress, it actually assigns a group for you on a state level and also on a district level for your congressional district. So the, here I just put in a zip code for, as part of my profile, was a Virginia zip code. So these are all of the different um, Open Congress members that have um, created a user account and then put in a zip code that was the same as mine. And then these are the number of Open Congress members in, um, that identify as being from Virginia. And you can easily leave a group if you're not interested. And it's very easy to create a group. So I'm just going to walk through how to start a group. You just go to create a group. You can put in the name of your group. So let's just call this a training group. Um, learning more about. Open Congress, website, well, Youth Sunlight Foundation, an issue area of focus. Um, we can just put in Congress. We're interested in Congress. Um, and the who can join? So this is where you can uh, make it public or not. So you can see here, invite only groups will be private and not appear in listings. So since this is a, a test or a trial, <laughs> group and not a real group. Let's just leave this invite only. You can set your moderators and then uh, oh okay V is that a Y? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so is it shows now I've created a group. You can invite folks to join it. You don't have to do so if you want to. I'll invite Drew. And there you go. You've now created a group. Um, and as I was saying earlier, it's very simple to add bill positions or track bills. So you can do that. These are the most uh, view bills. But let's say I was interested um, in the swaps bill I was looking at earlier. 992, not five. So hit search. Is it listed down there? No, I, um, there we go. So now you can just say, I either support the bill or oppose it, or just simply I'm interested in tracking this bill. You can put in additional comments as to whether you support it and your position on it, or just add the bill as it is. 
um, and then you can just add. So these are the most viewed bills. So I can just say I support that one. Um, or oppose. And then you can also add comments to the groups by just clicking Add Comments. Um, these are great bills. <laughs> Etc. And you can see that the comments are created, and it's very easy to moderate in terms of being able to delete or comments on the the comments. So that's a pretty um, quick overview of uh, Open Congress and some of the main functionalities of the sites. And then um, as I was doing, going through some of the different functionalities, I was adding tracked items and whatnot. You can see that in your account. And right now when you're tracking items, it actually just puts them into your Open Congress account. Uh, we are working on integrating um, Open Congress with one of our um, search and alert systems, Scout. Many of you are sure are very familiar with it. So we're working on that integration right now. And then you can also see additional actions. So this is a pretty much a history of your accounts on the site. If you have written any letters to Congress or you have identified whether you support bills or whatnot. And you can also add friends. I added Drew. And the watchdog function is also an interesting one because once you have identified whether you're supporting a bill or not, they will uh, compare that to your representatives to see how your position stands against um, those who represent you. My political notebook is just a great way of just putting in notes as you're going through and then you can also edit your profile. So these are some of the, the main functionalities of the sites. Um, the upcoming functions and the features that we're looking forward to integrating are, as I was saying earlier, um, a better integration of searches um, and tracking with Scout. And for folks who are not familiar, it's scout.sunlightfoundation.com. Um, and we're working on the more robust search and also comparing uh, the different rankings uh, of each member. And uh, right now we're also doing a quite extensive uh, interviewing and feedback uh, process where we're interviewing uh, folks who've either you know, have been longtime users of Open Congress or just you know, have never seen Open Congress as a tool before and are just you know, looking at and interviewing to find out what people are interested in, what kind of data and information they're interested in. So I would love to hear sort of feedbacks from you um, if you have any on some of uh, functionalities, what could be made better in Open Congress. And then um, also want to note that we uh, have two Congress apps um, that would be useful if you're interested in tracking Congress and you can download them um, from the bottom of the page, I'll link you to the, the congress.sunlightfoundation.com. So are there any questions or comments? Were there some from the sites? Are there thoughts on expanding this to local level and city-state governments? So we definitely have been doing more work on, on a local level, um, but collecting a lot of the information, uh, especially about legislators, and we're hoping to uh, incorporate that at some point into a number of different properties at, at Sunlight. Um, but if you're looking and interested in state uh, data, we actually do have a separate tool. Uh, it's called Open States, and I can sh show it really quickly. Uh, we're pretty consistent with our naming protocol. So here is Open States. 
Um, and this is a great resource for looking at bills and finding out what's going on, on your, in your state. Um, this is a, a tool across all 50 states we have data from. And in addition to 50 states, we also have Puerto Rico and Washington, D.C. So this is a great state tool if you're looking for state information. But especially on the city level, that's something that we're working on. Yeah, also, the, while it would take quite a bit of work in order to adapt Open Congress to the local level, uh, it is an open source project. Uh, so if you look at the title bar on my web browser here, github.com slash sunlightlabs slash Open Congress, uh, if you go there, you can find all of the source code for the website, and uh, you, you'd be free to fork it and make your own version of it for whatever uh, local government you are interested in. Um, and it also looks like a question about whether this presentation will be available later. Um, it will be, and it will be available actually on um, Sunlight Academy, which is another one of our um, tools. You can find it at training.sunlightfoundation.com. Actually, a number of people on, on this site are part of the um, Sunlight Academy. And if you log in, I will send you emails about upcoming training events and whatnot. And all of the um, webinars are archived here uh, at the bottom of the page, the different webinars we have done. And that's, once again, training.sunlightfoundation.com. In addition to uh, archived webinars, there are just a number of, of different resources here, uh, tutorials about how to use different tools. We have DockerWrench is one of them. Or just uh, simple tutorials, such as you know, how to create data viz um, using Google Docs. So it's a, a lot of information here that I hope you will take a look at. Um, are there other questions? And feel free if uh, you have them to hit star seven. Actually, we have a question from the room. Um, does Open Congress have historical data both on prior bills passed and like committee memberships? So for example, you were showing Senator Jeff Sessions before, who's a third term senator. Has he always been on the same committees? And is it possible to see what committees he's been on previously? Uh, it is not currently possible to see what committees he's been on previously. Uh, the that is in the plans. We plan on adding historical data. It's available. It's just in a slightly different format that's ever so slightly incompatible with our current format. And so uh, once we work out those differences, that will also be on the site. Great. And it looks like from Nancy, we have a question about whether we're going to broaden this to follow rulemaking and regulations. Um, we actually have uh, some information about that um, on two different properties, uh, two different sunlight tools. and. One, as I was saying earlier, was Scout. So through Scout, you can actually track and follow uh, regulatory information and um, data. So let's say I was interested in um, campaign finance. Um, so now I'm looking at campaign finance, and I will go to federal regulations. So this is whenever any new uh, regulations that come out uh, that mentions the term campaign finance um, in it, I can create an alert and it will be sent to uh, either via email or I can even set up my um, phone so I can get an SMS message. Uh, and you can also create, uh, let's say I'm only interested in campaign finance by a specific agency, you can also filter it down to a specific one which you're interested in. Another tool that we have that looks a little bit more regulatory data is uh, Docket Wrench. And you can find that at docketwrench.sunlightfoundation.com. Um, this tool allows you to look at and compare the regulatory comments, so the comments that individuals, organizations, businesses, et cetera, make on um, uh, dockets and regulations. So this is also another interesting tool uh, to take a look at. You can put in a specific docket number if you know it, or you can just sort by uh, different agencies. So let's say I'm you know, Department of Agriculture, let's say I was interested in Department of Education, for instance. You can look at the regulatory data um, of this agency. But of note, uh, a big difference between Scout and DocketWrench is that DocketWrench only has information about the agencies that participate in regulations.gov, and there's more information about that in the uh, About Us page on DocketWrench. 
Um, and that's, you know, about, I want to say it's about uh, 350 or so agencies who do participate, but there are a number of big ones that don't. Uh, and then in Scout is actually all the agencies are here in terms of creating an alert. Um, are there other informations? What types of information can we embed on our websites is one by, uh, a question by, uh, from Sandra. Um, that's one of the things that you can do. Uh, I showed it really briefly in terms of uh, the widgets. And that's where you will be able to embed some of the information. So you can go to Open Congress and then I believe in resources. Yeah, the, the URL is opencongress.org slash widgets, oh. W-I-D-G-E-T-S. Here we go. So here are a number of different widgets that we have available that will make the data of uh, Open Congress embeddable onto your own sites. So you can do a bill status widget. You can customize it. Uh, you can either choose a, uh, choose a popular bill or you can put in a specific bill number. So let's say I was interested in that bill I was looking at earlier. It will put that information in here. On the left-hand side is a live preview of what that widget will look like. Are there any other questions that we have missed on the list that you saw or that could have been interesting? No, we had some really good questions. And I think as I just chatted, I think as people use the site, um, share it with your colleagues, share it with your friends. Um, if anything comes up, just let us know. Amy and Drew's information's on there. We also have a general Open Congress email address at opencongress at sunlightfoundation.com. You can also um, link to it from our website, from the About page, from our Contact Us page. We really want to receive your feedback. Um, we're really dedicated to improving the site and continuing to make it a great, helpful resource um, for the public at large. We're really happy that um, always supported the site as it was developed, and now it is a property of sunlight, and we're looking forward to um, having it be part of our, uh, our family of tools. Yep, and it's on the bottom of the page, opencongress.org backslash uh, contact. And Liz's contact information and phone number is on there. So if you have any questions about it, I feel free, especially if you're a reporter, to get in touch with Liz um, and she will help you find the information you're looking for. Any other questions? Drew, do you want to talk a little bit more about sort of what's in the works? I covered a little bit of it. Uh, well, right now we're in a couple of rounds of uh, user interviews, user testing interviews in order to uh, get a better sense for um, how the, the site works for people who are a little less familiar with the data. Uh, sometimes uh, when you work with it every day, you can get a little blinded to the, uh, to the sort of uh, conceptual uh, blocks that people get when they're uh, trying to figure out what's going on in Congress. So uh, pending those interviews and uh, what we find out there, we're going to add uh, quite a few different features. Um, the uh, probably the quickest things that you'll see is just a continued uh, refresh of the data and a more automated sense of what's going on in Congress. Uh, so right now we offer you um, uh, the most common searches as suggestions on the front page, but we'll soon also offer um, suggestions on uh, what are the bills that you know are actually being worked on in Congress or being discussed in the news. Uh, features like that. All right. Are there any other questions? Can you say oppose or support on a bill with a widget? Uh, no, you can't, but the bill status widget, it will let you target a specific bill, and that will include a link to the website. And on that page, they would be able to specify whether or not they support or oppose it, and also write their rep. Um, when will the links to news articles be working again? Uh, there's quite a bit of um, turbulence in the market for news APIs. Uh, we, our current systems, our previous systems, relied on the Google News API, which is no longer going to be available to us in the same way. 
Um, and so once we find a replacement for that, we'll have that working again. Right. And I think, as Drew was saying, that's a, a new functionality, is being able to see not only the news uh, about that specific bill, but also being able to aggregate and see you know, what, what, what the news is talking about. Um, so what is popular not only amongst uh, Open Congress users, but what's popular um, in the news, which is a brand new functionality that Open Congress didn't have before. Right. We we'll also encourage people to, if you are, you can sort of become a super user among a few of our sites. Um, to kind of create your own customized feeds. Uh, Amy briefly shared Scout, which is our legislative alert and regulatory tracking service, but there is a feature on Scout, an advanced feature, where you can feed in your own RSS feed. So if you are following something like, um, you know, Title I education or climate change and you have a news source that you really like, you, and, you, and you also want to tie it to all of the bill information and congressional record information you're receiving about it, you can create your own RSS feed and attach it to one of your Scout subscriptions so that you can receive sort of an all-in-one email from the service. Um, and then Ed just asks if you can use Twitter as a news link source, and I think that's something that's really great for our developers um, to put on their, <laughs> on their review list. Uh, if if that proves to be a useful source, I'm sure we'll incorporate it. Uh, there's some uh, variety in terms of the accounts that members of Congress use. In term, uh, they have official accounts that are run by office staff and also campaign accounts. And so, um, you know, s sorting out the details between those can uh, w might take us a little bit of time, but we'll add it if we find links there. Yeah. And I'm showing here is uh, as what uh, Liz was just mentioning is the Scout uh, tool, scout.sellingfoundation.com. So when you are in your account, you can go to the bottom of the page and that's where you'll find feeds. And this is where you can um, uh, paste in any URL of any RSS feed you're interested in and then Scout will create an alert for you. Um, and then another thing I actually wanted to mention uh, for folks that w might be helpful is um, more information about our Congress API. So you can find the API via either uh, Open Congress on the bottom of the page for developers. And then additionally, you can find all of our APIs. We have a number of them available um, via sunlightfoundation.com uh, slash API. So here, uh, you can just click on through to the Congress API. And there's also additional information here that could be useful, such as bulk data, uh, you can download a whole a spreadsheet of all the different legislators and legislative information. And on that spreadsheet, we'll have their contact information from their phone numbers to their addresses um, and their Twitter information, Twitter handle, and also their uh, YouTube pages. This is where uh, you know, we get a lot of that. We're scraping a lot of that data to incorporate into Open Congress. Um, and then additionally, there is the zip codes to congressional matching. So this is um, pretty much downloading a CSV of all of the zip codes that match up to different uh, representatives. So there's also a whole lot of information here. Uh, in the uh, Congress page, um, in Congress API page via bulk data that I encourage you. Their legislative photos are in here, so it's just a lot of information that you don't have to be a developer um, to find interesting. Um, are there any other questions? Well, you can continue. I'll stay on the chat for the next few minutes or so, so we'll do a firm 2 p.m. start stop. But um, if you want to even unmute your phone, you can press star 7 and ask us a question or continue to use the chat. Um, I said we can stick around for the next few minutes or so and continue to ask your questions. But um, as Amy has said, and all this will be archived at Sunlight Academy, which is training.sunlightfoundation.com. We'll also send around a link. Um, so you'll be able to review the slides, see all the screens that Amy and Drew shared, as well as um, check, shoot through, see through the audio and listen to what uh, was shared today. Right. And we have our email addresses up on the screen right now. And really feel free to send us an email if you have any questions. Um, or you think of questions later as you're using the site, uh, or if you come across bugs and whatnot, and we're pretty responsive. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, 
and we hope you use Open Congress and uh, really looking forward to hearing your feedback. Um, and I'll also share with everyone that was here uh, probably in the next uh, day or two after we clean up the audio, the archive version of uh, today's webinar. So thank you so much once again for joining us. Um, and thank you to Liz and Drew for providing so much help and support on this. And have a great day. <laughs>